I moved everything off my Synology NAS and rebuilt it from the ground up. In this video, I'll show what the differences were with accessing my data, how I replaced applications that I use daily like Synology Drive and Active Backup for Business, how backups changed and actually improved, but most importantly, explain if it was or wasn't worth it. Before we get into that, a quick word from today's sponsor, Twingate. If you've ever tried to access your home lab from outside of your network, you know the drill. Open ports on your router, set up dynamic DNS, configure a VPN, and you're still thinking about security. That's exactly why I switched over my business's remote access to Twingate. Twingate gives you a private zero trust path into your home or business without exposing anything to the internet. No open ports, no need for firewall rules. Every user and device is verified before they're able to access any of your important services. The setup is straightforward. Docker, a Linux container, and a few other options that even provide the option of redundancy. I used it to give remote editors access to Nextcloud, and I'll be using it to set up my offsite NAS. Once it was configured, I'm able to ensure that everyone can only access exactly what they explicitly should. If you want a cleaner, safer way to access your home lab remotely, use the link in the description to check out Twingate. Thanks to Twingate for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to it. The first thing to discuss is the setup process because realistically, this is the absolute biggest difference. This is going to be based on what you select. So if you want to go with a pre-built NAS, it's gonna be different than if you want to go with a DIY NAS operating system. That kind of ignores that you can install a DIY NAS operating system on some pre-built NAS devices. But the important point is that that is going to be the overall biggest difference for you. For me, I selected TrueNAS. Now, funny enough, TrueNAS is something I stayed away from for a long time. I used it, I set it up for clients, I set it up in test environments, but I'd never shifted all of my data to it. The main reason was because I didn't think the average consumer would be interested in TrueNAS. I looked at it more as a power user NAS operating system rather than something for the masses. And it's true. TrueNAS is harder to set up in every way than Synology DSM was for me. But in the end, which we'll get to in a little bit, it is night and day. And I just put out a video on why people love TrueNAS, and I've always known those reasons. But as you'll see, there are a lot of benefits that I am currently receiving in terms of my overall data strategy that I didn't initially have. But before we get to that, let's talk about some basics. So accessing my data, how do I access my data? It's generally the same. If you're accessing your Synology NAS using something like SMB, or if you have a virtual machine using NFS, you could set all of it up on generally any operating system that you choose. The exception is certain operating systems like Unified Drive, for example, don't support things like iSCSI. Now you'll have to determine if that's important for you or if it's not important for you. But the main point here is that generally, you're going to be able to do exactly what you were able to do on your Synology NAS on any other NAS operating system. And with TrueNAS, while again, the setup process was a little more complicated, as soon as everything was set up, it runs the exact same way as it always did which then led me to my next hurdle, which was applications. Now, anyone that's been around this channel for a while knows that there were certain Synology applications that I relied on. I used Synology Drive just about every single day. All of my systems backed up with Synology's Active Backup for Business. I used Hyper Backup to back up all of my data to cloud storage, or I should say my important data to cloud storage. But in general, those applications were what I used every single day. So how was I going to replace those? And the truth is that I replace all of them, but I'm doing it in very different ways. So for example, Synology Drive for me was a one-to-one -one replacement with Nextcloud. I have been using Nextcloud for a few months now. There is no fundamental difference that I have experienced based on my usage. If you're interested in setting up Nextcloud, I have a video that I'll leave a pop-up for now. But for Synology Drive, which I thought would be the hardest thing to replace, it was actually the easiest because I'm using Nextcloud and it functions the exact same way. For Active Backup for Business, I switched over to a tool called Your Backup. 
Now your backup has run flawlessly as well. But one thing I will say is that your backup on TrueNAS is not running with block level deduplication, where with Synology's active backup for business, it is. The only important thing to understand with that is that my backups generally take up more space than they did on Synology DSM. So it's not a huge amount of data, but the backups one for one are taking up more space than they did. The next is CloudSync and fundamentally nothing has changed with that. I basically have it set up exactly as I had it set up in Synology DSM and it's actually built directly into TrueNAS. So from that perspective, no change as well. So now we have to get into backups, which actually funny enough was the biggest change for me. And there's one big lesson that you have to understand from this perspective, assuming that you ever were looking to replace a Synology. And it's that your first inclination is going to be to try and replace the functionality on the Synology NAS. So as an example, for me, I tried to replace Hyper Backup. So I had Hyper Backup running, it backed up to cloud storage locations, it backed up to another NAS device I had, I encrypted those backups. I needed to replace it and I needed a tool like Hyper Backup and I spent some time looking for it before realizing that I'm approaching this wrong and that's the biggest lesson that you have to take. Other NAS operating systems are not going to function the way Synology DSM does. Realistically, there's not a great option to replace Hyper Backup, but you have to look at what Hyper Backup did and then try and take a step back and replace that functionality, right? So for me, Hyper Backup was a tool that I used to back up my data and have it in a format that was encrypted. The key there was encrypted. As soon as I looked at it from that perspective, I started to understand that the easiest way to backup data is not to use a backup tool. With TrueNAS, I use ZFS replication. So I set up a second TrueNAS setup. I basically replicate all of the data offsite using ZFS replication, which I have a video coming out on if you're interested. But the point is, what I was trying to do was not something that I could do. I mean, I could probably find a tool that's able to do it, but the point is I was trying to replace functionality that TrueNAS did not have built in while also ignoring that TrueNAS had functionality that existed that did the exact same thing and actually did it better. I now have all of my data encrypted offsite. It's locked at all times. I'm doing block level replication. It just, works really, really well and way better than my backup strategy used to be. Now it also replaced problems with hyper backup that I never really realized existed. So what I mean by that is my backups ran on a nightly basis and those backups, if it took four, six, eight hours, wasn't something I really was concerned about. But the point was they were very long. Hyper backup is known as being a pretty slow backup utility. and. The main reason is because you're backing up to an archive, right? So you're not putting it in the same format that it's currently in. If you used a tool that basically did rsync backups, you would see they're super quick because it's just doing the differential. With Synology's hyper backup, especially if you use encryption, you're backing up to an archive. So the long story of that is that my backups are way better than they used to be. It's just not done the way it was. Which brings us to the most important point, was it worth it? So this is the good that I experienced in this entire process. The first is it allowed me to prioritize my data. So I was no longer forcing myself to look at applications that I had available in a specific NAS operating system. I was able to say, this is my goal. This is what I need to do. What is the best way of doing it? which then allowed me to come up with a better overall data strategy than I had. Now, again, it was harder to set up initially. And in general, that's going to be the biggest hurdle for most people. But I looked at my data strategy and the data strategy that I had is not even close to what I have right now. It's better organized. I have better backups. They're more frequent backups. And in general, it's better in every single way. It also allowed me to look at my NAS and realize I was using it as a jack of all trades. So there are applications now on my NAS 
that are better run on the NAS. So for example, your backup runs directly on the NAS, but Nextcloud runs in a completely separate system that is running inside of Docker and it just writes the data to the NAS. It's better on that system. So I'm not forcing myself to put everything on one device like I used to. And most importantly, my reliance on one specific vendor is gone. Now I still have individual applications that I use that I rely on, but I don't have one box that locks me into one vendor. And if I ever want to upgrade that box and use those applications, I have to buy the same system from that vendor. Those days are gone. I can use any NAS operating system I want. And in general, I will have the exact same functionality that I currently have. And finally, the bad. This was generally done as an exercise to see if I could replace my Synology NAS based on the hard drive restrictions. So Synology, for those who probably already know, implemented hard drive restrictions on their latest NAS devices. That was a problem for me, a main problem because I have a lot of hard drives. I have hard drives that I am not going to replace. So if I couldn't use them, upgrading that NAS eventually, which is something that I had to do, wasn't something that I could do because I couldn't use those drives and I wasn't buying new ones. Those drive restrictions were kind of walked back. So as of right now, on Synology DS25 Plus series devices and value series, you can go ahead and create a storage pool the way you always could on every prior Synology NAS. That is something that it's not totally clear how long that will be the case. Is it temporary? Is it permanent? We weren't really given any word on that, but that's something to be aware of. Speaking honestly, if those drive restrictions never happened, I probably would not have done this, mainly because it's easier for me, especially, as somebody who's not looking to really maintain this, especially on the data side, data is not something you wanna be playing around with a lot. On the data side, to just keep doing everything I was doing. It worked, it worked really well, and I had no reason to change it. If I could upgrade all of my systems and everything would continue to work, there was no reason to change it. But funny enough, doing it and going through this exercise got me to understand why everybody loves TrueNAS. And there's a huge learning curve. I put out a video recently on TrueNAS dataset permissions. And if you even just watch that one video, you're probably gonna understand why people are scared of it. But if you get past that hurdle, you'll see why everybody loves it. And I say everybody because the majority of people that you're going to see comments from are going to be based around not necessarily TrueNAS, but ZFS. And with TrueNAS, you get ZFS. So that's something that there's a reason why these people are saying those things. And it's because as soon as you start to use it, you realize the value you have with it and you're not looking to switch back. So funny enough, it would actually be harder for me to switch back to a Synology NAS now than it was for me to switch from a Synology NAS to something else. And it's just based on ZFS replication and how I'm able to ensure that all of my data is backed up multiple times a day, offsite, everywhere. But my biggest concerns that I had have all been alleviated. I have a better overall strategy for my data. I have better functionality than I had. And I have a few sacrifices that I made, but the benefits far, far outweigh those downsides. But it's really important to say that while it worked out for me, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's the best option for a lot of people. And that really goes to show how great of an operating system Synology DSM is. So if your only issue was hard drives, fortunately that was resolved and now you can buy a newer Synology NAS and utilize your third-party hard drives. Let's just hope that that stays the case. That's my experience. I'd love to hear what you guys think though. If you made it this far, thank you very much for watching the video. I'll see you guys next time.